Welcome my friend, pull up a seat, but not too close, as I have tested positive for Covid this very morning. I hope that you will forgive me for sounding strange because of this, but I did not want to miss our meeting. Today I will tell you of that stalwart of British folklore, the Black Dog. There is much to tell, maybe too much for one sitting, so you may need to return tomorrow for the tale to be completed. Now, the Black Dogs. The Black Dog is a supernatural, spectral or demonic entity originating from English folklore that has also been seen throughout Europe and the Americas. It is usually unnaturally large with glowing red or yellow eyes, is often connected with the devil as an English incarnation of the Hellhound and is sometimes an omen of death. It is sometimes associated with electrical storms, such as Black Shuck's appearance at Bungay in Suffolk, and with crossroads, barrows, places of execution, and ancient pathways. Black dogs are generally regarded as sinister or malevolent, and a few, such as a bar guest and Shuck, are said to be directly harmful. Some black dogs, however, such as a Gert dog in Somerset, are said to behave benevolently as guardian black dogs, guiding travellers at night onto the right path or protecting them from danger. Black dogs have been reported from almost all the counties of England, the exceptions being Middlesex and Rutland. Some of the better known black dogs are the Bar Guest of Yorkshire and Black Shuck of East Anglia. Other names are Hairy Jack, Padfoot, Churchyard Beast, Shug Monkey, Capplethwaite, Moddy Doo, The Swooning Shadow, Bogey Beast and Guy Trash. Although the Church Grim is not a bar guest or shuck, it can also take the form of a large black dog. Here is a list of black dogs and the places they appear in the British Isles. A bar guest is said to roam the snickle ways and side roads of York, preying on passers-by and has also been seen near Clifford's Tower. To see the monstrous dog is said to be a warning of impending doom. A man who lived in a village near Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire would go each morning and night to milk his cows in a distant field. One night on the way there he encountered a sinister black dog and every night thereafter until he brought a friend along with him. When the dog appeared again he attacked it using the yoke of his milk pails as a weapon but when he did so the dog vanished and the man fell senseless to the ground. He was carried home alive but remained speechless and paralytic for the rest of his life. In Jersey, the Chan de Boulet tells of a phantom dog whose appearance foreshadows storms. The Chan de Boulet is described as a monstrous black hound with eyes the size of saucers and, in some versions of the legend, a chain which it drags behind it the sound of which is often the first warning victims have of its presence. Although terrifying, it never does physical harm. Its appearance is said to herald a storm. Near the town of Lyme Regis in Dorset stood a farmhouse that was haunted by a black dog. This dog never caused any harm, but one night the master of the house, in a drunken rage, tried to attack it with an iron poker. The dog fled to the attic, where it leapt out through the ceiling and when the master struck the spot where the dog vanished, he discovered a hidden cache of gold and silver. The dog was never seen again indoors, but to this day it continues to haunt, at midnight, a lane which leads to the house called Hay Lane, or Dog Lane. Dogs who are allowed to stray in its area late at night have often mysteriously disappeared. A bed and breakfast in Lyme Regis is named the Old Black Dog, and part of the legend states that the man who discovered the treasure used it to build an inn that originally stood on the site. The Black Dog of Newgate has been said to haunt the Newgate prison for over 400 years, appearing before executions. According to legend, in 1596 a scholar was sent to the prison for witchcraft, but was killed and eaten by starving prisoners before he was given a trial. The dog was said to appear soon after, and although the terrified men killed their guards and escaped, the beast is said to have hunted them down and killed them wherever they fled. Grim, or Fairy Grim, 
is the name of a shape-shifting fairy that sometimes took the form of a black dog in the 17th century pamphlet The Mad Pranks and Merry Jests of Robin Goodfellow. He was also referred to as the Black Dog of Newgate, but though he enjoyed frightening people, he never did any serious harm. In the village of Northorpe, in the West Lindsay district of Lincolnshire, the churchyards are said to be haunted by a bar guest. Some black dogs are said to be human beings of the power of shape-shifting, and in another nearby village there lived an old man who was reputed to be a wizard. It was claimed that he would transform into a black dog and attack his neighbour's cattle. It is uncertain if there was any connection between the bar guest and the wizard. In the parish of Tring in Hertfordshire, a chimney sweep named Thomas Colley was executed by hanging in 1751 for the drowning murder of Ruth Osborne, who he accused of being a witch. Collie's spirit now haunts the sight of the gibbet in the form of a black dog, and the clanking of his chains can also be heard. In one tale, a pair of men who encountered the dog saw a burst of flame before it appeared in front of them, big as a Newfoundland, with the unusual burning eyes and long sharp teeth. After a few minutes it disappeared, either vanishing like a shadow or sinking into the earth. In Norfolk, Suffolk, Lincolnshire and the northern parts of Essex, a black dog known as Black Shuck, also Old Shuck or Shock, is regarded as malevolent, with stories ranging from terrifying people, or killing them outright, to being a portent of death to themselves or a person close to the victim. There are tales that, in 1577, it attacked the church in the market town of Bungay, killing two people, and appearing on the same day at the church in the nearby village of Blytheburg, taking the lives of another three, and leaving claw marks which remain today. In the parish of Overstrand is a lane known as Shuck's Lane from its frequent appearances there. According to urban legends, if the spot where it has just been seen is examined, then one may find scorch marks and the smell of brimstone. There are also less common tales of a similar dog said to accompany people on their way home in the role of protector, rather than an omen of misfortune. Among other possible meanings, the name Shuck is derived from a provincial word meaning shaggy. In Guernsey is Bodu, or Chen Bodu, Chen being dog in Guernsey French. His appearance, usually at the Clause du Val, foretells death of the viewer or someone close to them. In Westmoreland and adjacent parts of Yorkshire, there was a belief in Capplethwaite, who could take the form of any quadruped, but usually appeared as a large black dog. He took his name from the barn in which he lived, called Capplethwaite Barn, near Milnthorpe. He performed helpful services for the people on the farm, such as rounding up the sheep. But towards outsiders, he was very spiteful and mischievous, until one day he was banished by a vicar. As both a helper and a trickster, the Capplethwaite behaved more like a domestic hobgoblin than a typical black dog. The church Grimm guards a local Christian church and its attached churchyard from those who would profane them, including thieves, vandals, witches and warlocks. For this purpose it was a custom to bury a dog alive under the cornerstone of a church as a foundation sacrifice. Sometimes the Grimm will toll the bells at midnight before a death occurs. At funerals the presiding clergyman may see the dog looking out from the church tower and determine from its aspect whether the soul of the departed was bound for heaven or hell. Another tradition states that when a new churchyard was opened, the first man buried there had to guard it against the devil. To save a human soul from such a duty, a black dog was buried in the north part of the churchyard as a substitute. Ah, I fear our time has run short, my friend, before I have completed the tale. If you enjoyed our little chat today, please like, subscribe, and maybe leave a comment down below. And hopefully I shall see you tomorrow to continue our stories of the Black Dogs of Britain.